Uh, Professor Fu, curious at what Beijing's view on all of this is, uh, especially uh, this discussion that is now raging across Chinese state-run media about President Trump's double standards. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting angle because Trump's threats to American protesters basically gave Beijing the best propaganda gift ever. Um, because Beijing is now saying, look, you know, when the Hong Kong police cracks down on protesters, Washington calls it human rights abuse. They call the Hong Kong protesters heroes. But when the U.S. tear gases and shoots rubber bullets on their own protesters, they call it restoring order. So for Beijing, this is absolutely U.S. hypocrisy on full display. And I think that it, to some extent it's true that uh, Trump's actions definitely is hurting U.S. credibility, but I think it's also giving Beijing a golden opportunity to basically change the conversation. Now, Beijing wants people to focus on br police brutality, but that's not really the crux of the issue in Hong Kong. The heart of the issue in Hong Kong is the right to self-govern. Under the one country, two systems arrangement, Hong Kong people should be the ones deciding their laws and not Beijing. So what Beijing is doing is it's bypassing Hong Kong altogether and passing the national security law, and that's effectively moving the status quo to award a one country, one system with Beijing in the driver's seat. And I think, Emily, that's, that is exactly why Hong Kong people are so anxious about their future. Meantime, you've got President Trump in an election year, and his actions on China, even his threats, are very mobilizing to his base. So I wonder uh, if that could motivate um, the actions that the president ultimately takes on China. I mean, of course, he's, he's threatened uh, a, a number of things, though the phase one trade deal remains largely intact. You know, how could uh, potentially facing uh, re-election impact what the White House uh, decides in terms of policy here? Well, yeah, that's a good question. But, you know, I think if, if Beijing has learned anything in the past years, it's that Trump is very un unreliable and he changes his tune all the time. So I think they're waiting to see if Trump's threats of retaliation are really going to come true or not. But even if Trump keeps his word and imposes tariffs and trade restrictions and visa requirements on Hong Kong, I very much doubt that Beijing would actually backtrack I think for Beijing to change its course after it has passed a law through the National People's Congress, this would be seen as a national humiliation. It would be seen as bowing to foreign bullying, and Beijing will not show such kind of weakness. Meantime, do you expect Beijing uh, to retaliate it even further? I mean, they've, they've asked state-run companies to not buy U.S. farm products. What more could they do? Yeah, I think Beijing has adopted a very combative uh, diplomatic posture, and this is what some people have called a wolf, wolf warrior diplomacy. And so the wolf warrior is a character actually from a Chinese blockbuster who defends China's honor. So Chinese diplomats are hitting back hard at any country that Beijing sees as attacking China, and this includes the U.S., EU, Canada, Australia, and other Western allies. So I think that there is a very much a possibility that Beijing will uh, will retaliate. Meantime, what does this all mean for Hong Kong? I mean, the, the part of the issue is Hong Kong's ability to self-govern. And is that, you know, ultimately taken away? Yeah, I think that um, this security law is uh, really a watershed moment for Hong Kongers. Uh, it's very bad news for Hong Kongers who care about civil and political liberties because Beijing is essentially declaring that it will define which activities consist of subversion, which activities are secessionist or seditionist, and not the Hong Kong people. And this law, uh, you know, very worryingly, would also allow mainland security agencies to set up in Hong Kong. And so Beijing does not deal very lightly with individuals who are charged with subversion. In mainland China, activists who are charged with subversion are often given long uh, jail sentences. So this is also very worrying for um, Hong Kong protesters who could potentially be charged with subversion of state power. All right, uh, Diana Fu, you know, what, do you, what is your view on the next step? What are you going to be watching? Well, I mean, I think the next steps, it's hard to say what the next steps are, but I think that unfortunately the options for uh, those who oppose the security law in Hong Kong 
are very few. It's basically a fight or flight situation. So one option for those who oppose the law is to fight to the end. And indeed, we've seen that many have already taken to the streets once again, but um, they are being met with very well-prepared security forces in Hong Kong. And just last week, authorities arrested more than 300 of, of activists. So activists are fearing, you know, protest fatigue. This is amplified by the pandemic, and they're not seeing the same turnout as last summer. Now, others could also choose to flee. Okay. Um, so in the coming months, you know, we might see people fleeing.